Uh, yeah, before we start, is there any, uh, any project planners in the room? How many times has your project manager changed his mind today? We all feel the pain. You know, Don't we, we all feel the pain. Project managers jump around, change the plan. Um, and a lot of the time that, we, that, that leads to us having to do multiple PDFs, multiple versions of PDFs, multiple colours of the same PDF. And um, yeah, this is, this is how they get, you know, this is how many project managers look at their, uh, their gacha. Ah, yeah. oh, we're pretty. Uh, yeah, this, this, this is yeah, standard. So, oh yeah. No. Bottom. The right. The right. I can't say the thing. It's <laughs> good <laughs> 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 So close. <laughs> <laughs> Times a planner is often better utilised actually planning rather than reporting. Um, and again, yeah, again, you can't interact with the PDF. There's no, um, you can't ask it questions. You can't see it a different way. Um, yeah. So essentially, what we've done, we've caught the way of hooking up um, your. Visualize your, your 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 project schedule in uh, in a real time way. So when you press refresh in Primavera, it refreshes in here, and you, you can you can analyze your schedule. You can actually spend time rather than, than printing off PDFs, and rather than yeah, you, you can get straight into the straight into the detail and start seeing your baseline program on the top and your update program on the bottom. And you, you can go through and draw down and report at different levels. You can have different levels of ownership, you can have different filters for different team leads, different people on site, you can have different views. And you can put this all up onto a web-based cloud where everybody can access it real time throughout the day. Um, as I say, the ability to measure two programs at once, three if you wanted to, um, really, really adds value. And again, you can get your resource information and start asking me questions. See it at all different levels. So then we're looking at the cables. We can actually look down straight at individual resources too. If you look at the a list of them there, what I'm specifically looking for. I really am blind for that. You can see it. So you can give different team leads their, uh, their works information. You can measure it week on week, month on month, however you want to write. You can also extract resource information directly out and put it in the next code. That again is filterable by, by teams, by WBS level, by just about any, anything you want. You can even put these defined fields into your Primavera database and filter it by that. Um, as you can see, you'll be able to see your slippage. Um, running what if programs, if your project manager comes to you during the day, it, you, you're not having to print off multiple, you know, multiple versions. There's no issue with version control as well. So if people are running off the old PDF and somebody else has got the new PDF and it's arguments about dates, you can go straight up to the Primavera dashboard and look and yeah, there's one source of truth throughout the whole organization. And that's it. 
Another useful thing we've got there is the float erosion chart. So you can see this is the total amount of float in the schedule before. This is the total amount of float in the schedule afterwards. And you can see this is where we're getting float back in green, and in red is where we're losing float. If you click in there, you get a list of tasks as to where the float has gone. Same. So you can send that out and ask for information uh, by clicking in here. Send that as a CSV by exporting that data there and send it out. Export that back into the dashboard if you want with, with reasons for variance. Have some charts explaining constraints, uh, issues in the month. And again, one of the, one of the major issues with Rivera, if, if, if you work with it, is not all of the data is easily accessible. So lags and lead information within the database, you can't easily pull that out without specialist tools. Whereas here you can see this was the baseline program. So we've got leads in, the files have been very naughty. <laughs> Use that to, uh, to, to uh, reduce those leads. And again, you can export that as a PDF or CSV and give that, give that out live to, to, to the responsible owner, get them to update it. I guess that moves us into the future state of what we're avoiding. So the current state of agency is labor intensive, full of can you just requests, there's no interactivity. We move to the future state where there's less sort of manual data handling. So a lot of people, okay, you won't report straight up PDFs in Primavera, you'll move it to Excel, move around. And yeah, you're just introducing error. You're introducing non-value added time because you you double handling your data, you're not um, you know, it, it, that is, that is non-value add time. This is time you could be spending analyzing, running what if scenarios, actually adding value and bringing your project end date back in. Um, at that time, at the minute, is spent reporting. Um, yeah, uh, I guess the, the other big point is that it becomes self-service. So instead of actually having to print off PDFs, distribute them, anybody can go in and then look, there's one source of truth. It's, there's, there's not multiple copies flying around. And yeah, it makes it fully interactive leads us on to the benefits here, where um, you can see that you can quite easily like, um, improve your schedule integrity, because obviously you've got access to all of um, all the lags, the leads information. You, you do, you, we have actually at Ifaj Kia ran a DCMA 14 point analysis in the dashboard, um, and that has actually like, led to an increase in the program acceptance rate, which has been there. But well, I think the greatest benefit was the, the, the greater stakeholder involvement. And actually planning becomes not just the job of the planner. Everybody has visibility of the schedule, everybody has ownership of it, and actually everybody can see the data in real time. And that actually harks back to a thing that Ali was saying, is where you get the, the, the shared ownership. Um, that's where you really get value in implementation. And actually that's where, you, you know, it, it's great having the tools, but it's, it's driving the behaviors too. But let's say that the, the, the BI dashboard sort of helps, and uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely seen. Um, yeah, we've seen actual improvements and real benefits in real time. And yeah, really, uh, if, if, ever, if, if I think we were going to put out a survey, if any of you want a, a, a real simple intro to Power BI workshop with one of the meetups, happy to run one of those. Uh, yeah, thanks. If you've got any questions. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Microsoft Power BI comes out of the box or a CD or whatever they do. It doesn't come with that functionality out of the box. How long does it take to get that functionality to sort it out? It depends what you want. Uh, you can something like that. Something like that. Connecting up to the database, maybe maybe a day. A day's work. Not a, not a whole lot. It depends, again, if you understand your data. I mean, the creation of that. That, uh, and it's accessible so that you can come down to start steps you want and then review and compare and start to gain some baseline. If you understand your data and you, you, you know exactly what you're looking for, yeah. not, not a massive amount of time. Um, the time actually comes in understanding the database schema because yeah. you might have, you might be used to seeing it in Primavera in one way, but actually when it comes out, it comes out in a slightly different way. So if you understand the database schema that you're hooking up to, um, I mean, when you were doing it from an XER file, for example, it was a lot simpler, um, or it, it might be that I spent more time with that file, yeah. you know, I know it better. So again, it, it, 
massively depends on how much you understand your data. But but yeah, yeah. a day, two days, if you're if two, two work two days. Amount of blocks, that, 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 that. But re reading the data would take, yeah, two days or whatever, but in order to produce all sorts of visuals, I mean, with, especially with Primavera, with the amount of data that in, in this database, there are very rich sources of data. So if you want to visualize all the program, that would take way longer. Than like, yeah, like the work that you've done. It depends on skill level. Because like, as I say, that's taken a day, two days, but sometimes you might have something already built that you can kind of recycle, reuse. So again, the, the, the amount of effort you put in, you'll have platforms and the, the things that you can kind of bounce off and bounce off and use. Yeah. Great. Just one question. Mm -hmm. uh, the first that I, I think it's quite useful to have this dashboard combining and summarizing all the information from the Primavera because it's really, really difficult to read and have an idea of all the stages, the progress of the project. Uh, but is it possible to combine different files? Yes, it is. Primavera um, files? Is as long it? as you've got an activity uh, or a unique code uh, that you, you can use. You, you can combine that with a spreadsheet, you can combine that with a website, you can combine that with another database. As long as you've got the activity, the, the unique key, you can combine that with pretty much any, any data source. Right. You, you are combining two in this. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I've got two. Yeah, I've got two different yeah, projects within the same, yeah, in the same database there. But in theory, you can combine basically any data source and read that in within, within reason. And do you have any application of this? Program on, on the construction side, or it's just more like for a managerial level? So, um, you, we definitely have done within the here. So, for example, there's, uh, <coughs> we've actually got this reading in from, from something live on HS2 at the minute, um, and you can distribute that out to, um, to, to say, to, to site foreman, mm -hmm. and, and he can have his level. As you can see, the first gamut that was put up, you can kind of summarize that up. For you know, director level, and actually drill down and use the filters mm -hmm. to create, you know, and actually on the web app, I think you can create views so you can actually set it up so that they only go on and see their view. I don't think it's locked necessarily, but you can you can make it that it, it, it comes off with their you know their way of their way of looking at it. But yeah, uh, you can definitely do that. That's, yeah. Thank you. When you create an XCR, it tends to do a calculated out. Are those fields necessarily stored within the database? So if you're doing cost forecasting or whatever, is that actually within the database? It will be. Um, the, the, you can pretty much. Well, the, the, there are there are some data that are not included, are not stored in the database, and you need to calculate them on the fly. And we we we've done some work on that. Like when you talk about resource spread, if you're not yeah. using EPPM and you're using PPM, Primavera PPM only, that would not have the resources spread. But we've done some work with that. I mean, we've done that. We have uh, created that distribution and we stored it on the fly without having to, to pull it out from the database. But that was also automated without having any manual data handling or any manual calculations. So you're able to do that within Power BI? It reads what type of distribution it is and then yeah, spreads it? Yeah, what type of curves and, and it spreads it and, and, and get the curves out. I guess the, one of the other things is you can. You can actually do calculations within Power BI, it isn't just your data, you can obviously augment and there's, there's obviously got measures so you can, you can sort of do calculations on your data. So if there is something that for whatever reason doesn't have to get captured within um, within the Primavera database itself, you can easily quite recreate that if that's something you want. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. So thank you all for coming today, and it was really pleasure. And our next meetup is on the 12th of.